Yeah, well, he texted me again today. Who's your coach? Cam Worf. What did he say? He said, you still, I'm only sharing this because he won't mind. I would never share DMs. Flame. Anyways, you still planning on doing Copenhagen? Yeah, I'm going to figure this I am distance out. Don't care about how many races it takes. You racing this weekend? He said, good. As your coach, I'm thinking of coming to Copenhagen. I'll confirm tomorrow. I said, good. I could use a measure of where my bike is at. He said, I'm only coming to support you. I'm not racing. You know you're a long f***ing way behind me. You're nothing but a sniveling pack rat these days. It's sad. Only Cam Worth, my coach, would literally insult me in my own DMs. And this is not even meant to be shared in public. Now that's a good coach. Yeah. Curving all my critics like I heard you, so what? You can't kill my confidence, I think I'm the man. Tally all the f I ever gave on my head. two-day block. I am going to do long ride and a run off the bike today and tomorrow morning long run. So it's a pretty loaded block of uh, training. I also did stay six in the block so I did two bike workouts, two run workouts, five quality swims. So it's already pretty loaded and the big one is we're going to train inside this time and it's going to be the temperatures of the race and we're going to do something very close to the fueling strategy we will do in the race in Copenhagen and hopefully feel like a million bucks and run the second half of the run really well. Come on into the ice box. Make sure to shut the door behind you. How are you feeling on your ride today? Good. Excellent. I feel like I have nothing to prove. Tri battle. Tri battle I raced pretty soft, like intentionally. Knowing I wasn't gonna catch you on, I always was like, and you can even look at my notes. I said this the day before in my notes that if you don't catch, if you don't have a chance of catching, which you'll know in the first lap, then you need to race pretty easy and finish the run really well, which I did, but I was like crazy sore for three or four days after, and it wasn't a very good performance, like from a numbers standpoint, considering the average temperature was like 60 degrees, which is what led to all my my thoughts on uh, training in the heat not being apples to apples. St. George, 70.3, I was good the next day. Like I had very little soreness, which I believe indicates I did something within myself. I had trained to do that. And so um, that was the big take home from Tri Battle was, man, you gotta get fixed, get back into some like. One thing I used to be was crazy fit. 
I go back and I watch some of the old, even my own when I film the videos myself, and I look at the stuff I was doing. Well, it's no effing wonder I could lose five minutes in the water and still get close to the front. I was just crazy fit. And I believe that's the best guys in the world. You know, that's what they're, that's what they are, is crazy fit. That was good. That was really good. I, uh, that excites me a little bit. All right, we need uh, something to run in. What do you think? Good. Oh, it's been a while. It's been a while since I've done that and actually felt good. <sighs> that was fun. I think it's a good sign when, you know, we did it last time and I was dying. This time I'm like, let's keep going. That's good. Save that. You need that. Save that for Copenhagen. Because you get to keep going in Copenhagen. 12K, I mean, what? It's nothing. You know what I'm saying? Race starts at the half. I've never got to the half, ever. And been like, okay, let's race. Let's race. I always get to the half and I'm like, oh my God, I still have 13 miles to go. <sighs> All right, what do we got going on now? Well, we're doing the final session at the pool and actually am doing some technique work, if you can believe it. I haven't done technique work in probably eight months. We're working on nothing but feel for the water. But now that I have a feel for the water, coach thinks set, and after observing in the tri battle, the side-by-side -side photos of Frodo and me, that it's time to bring back some technical stuff. So gonna do a bunch with the fins trying to stretch the ankles out a bit because I swim with this L-shaped ankle most of the time and the four things that I'm working on or thinking about are head lower which we learned from the tri battle it was clear as day my head swimming with my head up more vertical of a forearm so that we push the water straight back and set it down which pushes your head up which pushes your legs down more roll to my non-breathing side because I'll breathe always to the right and then I swim very not much roll. Nice roll this way, no roll to this way, so more power and pointed toes. So I'm not swimming with this L shape. That's the four things and we'll do a bunch of drills and then a little bit of swimming to work on this. That's wetsuit legal, in my opinion. How was that? <laughs> Freezing. I'm used to swimming at the Aqua Bears pool, which is like 90 degrees. Beautiful, perfect. This has got to be like 80 degrees. It is freaking freezing. A lot of people are kind of unclear on the rest of your season. Uh, how do you see the rest of your season unfolding? I'm excited. You know I love racing. I am... Uh, I don't know, I, I, I honestly, it's it's hard to reflect back, you know, on the psychology of this whole thing, but I feel like I kind of went through a period of like fearfulness. I don't know what, I don't know why. I don't know if it was social media or YouTube or whatever, but I started to, I think, become fearful of the training I was doing and, you know, oh wow, I'm overtraining myself and I'm working too hard, I mean, well, Go follow Gustav and Christian Blumenfeld on Strava and you'll see uh, what hard training looks like. I mean, I'm not even in the ballpark of these guys. So, 
I don't know. It's just this weird period where, you know, I think I was ducking dudes, ducking world championship level races or contending contenders. And, you know, wanting to race kind of soft races and, you know, fearful of doing crazy hard sessions and fearful of racing a lot. Like, uh oh, I'm going to overtrain myself. Well, I mean, when I was overtraining myself, I had all my best performances. So something is to be said about that. That doesn't mean go and destroy yourself. That just means if you want to be the best in the world, there is a little, there is a level of risk that you assume based on the fact that you are going to push your body, mind, spirit to the limit. And, you know, try battle and some of these young guns coming up have, you know, re-inspired me, reinvigorated me to get back to something that I was, that's what I did in the beginning. I was a hard worker, crazy hard worker, and I had no fear. And I didn't care about what the swim deficit was. I didn't care what the bike numbers said. I went out, and when I heard the swim deficit, I said, no problem, I'll catch you soon enough. And I rode as hard as I could, and then I ran well off of that because I was just so damn used to it. And I didn't have any fear inside. So, better late than never. I realize that. I realize I've lost a little something in that department. And this next racing block, I intend to show you that I have it still. And I will continue to hone that. And I can get back. I can get back in line with the best guys in the world. I'm confident in that. Um, what does your next racing block look like? Oh, we're going in a big one here. I'm excited for it. We're going to do uh, a couple more days here in the, you know, final couple Ironman days, final couple sessions. Then uh, Monday, five days from today, we hit the road for Europe, and then we'll do Copenhagen. The goal there is to just do well, uh, whatever, to the Kona spot. That's a secondary, you know. I want to compete at the front. I haven't won an Ironman since 2017. It's getting a little bit old. And so I'm going to be, I want to be there. I want to be competing for real, not be blowing up the moment that I see the front of the race, you know. And uh, so that, and then recover. Basically just swim and do some active recovery on the bike on the run for five days. And then we get to go head to head with, head to head to head with someone in the Collins Cup, which will be uh, a lot of fun. And the more I think about it, the more I think the actual probably right battle is is to have me go against Sebastian Keenley because, uh, well, we've we've him and I have done that race three times combined. I've won two, he's won one, so I think we need to have the rematch. So a little piece of me is like, I think it's Keenley we got to race, and then whoever whoever USA picks to race us. So looking forward to that, and then real quick trip back home. Couple more days recovery, put in another seven, eight hard days, and then taper into 70.3 Worlds, which I love that course. It's my favorite course on the circuit. Obviously, the best guys in the world are gonna be there. See where you stand on a hillier course against the best guys in the world. And then, hopefully, if Copenhagen has gone to plan, then we'll do the same thing, recover a couple of days, put in seven, eight hard days, and then we'll go do Kona. And even if I don't make it to Kona, the plan will pretty well be the same, except then I'll go to uh, Ironman Sacramento. So it don't really matter what happens. Uh, that, that, that's the plan. And I intend to go out and, and you know, do well. Do Get back to basics. Get back to old school basics, which is, you know, swim to the best of your ability. Absolutely destroy the bike and destroy the run off of an insanely hard bike. And that's what I'm going to get back to, and that's that's how I will finish uh, the rest of my career. None of the soft crap that, that I've been doing recently. Final question for you. You just announced pretty much the rest of your season. Is that too hot of a schedule? I mean, oh, do yeah, you think it's, it's too much? Yeah, if you read the comments, absolutely. I'm going to get injured. I'm going to be overtrained and fried. I never thought that. I never had. The problem, this is the problem with commenting in social media is I never... My best races all came pre-YouTube, pre. You and I started working together in, by basically after Kona 2017. And you'll notice I took a very significant downturn after that. And I wouldn't blame it on YouTube or anything, but there is an aspect of listening to external voices and not listening to yourself 
and what you can handle and what you know is possible. And, and I certainly have fallen victim to fearfulness, fearfulness of overtraining, fearfulness of racing too much, fearfulness of going too hard and what's going to happen. And uh, like I said, I mean, I just, I, I love racing. I love pushing myself to the limit. And that's what I'm going to do. And I will take solace in what the outcome is if I do that for the rest of my career. And I push myself to the limit and I race to the limits and find out what I have inside. And I'm going to get back to that. And I can. I can get back to it real fast. And that's my intention.